and welcome to this episode of Studio Tech. Now, you might have guessed we're going to be looking at a camera, and this is the Sony PXW Z100. And this is a camera that Sony have kindly loaned us for the last uh, four or five weeks. So we've had opportunity to use it on several occasions. And the key thing about this camera is these two letters uh, here, or number letter, 4K. This is a 4K camera. Back in 2013, Sony announced to quite a lot of surprise two 4K cameras, the PXW Z100 and its sort of little baby brother, the FDR AX1E. Now these two cameras are very similar. The difference is in the codecs and the recording. The FDR AX1E basically records 50 megabits per second, whereas this camera can actually go up to 500 or 600 in, uh, in 60 frames per second, uh, megabits per second. So this is recording a lot more data. And if you're recording 4K, you want to get as much of that detail as possible. So we're gonna have a quick look at the camera and we're gonna show you our workflow. We just used uh, Apple's Final Cut to Pro 10. We were a little bit concerned, would our workflow work with 4K? Would we have to buy special equipment? Would we have to have a 4K monitor? But we edited with uh, on our Mac Pro. It's a 2012, uh, 2011 uh, Mac Pro, high-end 2.9, uh, you know, 12 core machine. But we actually found that using proxy media, there was no problems in our workflow. We then transcoded it uh, using uh, Sorensen uh, Squeeze. We normally use Telestream's episode, but they don't seem to have the 4K support in place yet. So our workflow actually was pretty good and we didn't need to buy a 4K monitor. And we uploaded to YouTube, which has 4K support. Anyway, we'll touch on that a little bit later. But let's uh, talk about this camera. First of all, something that we often forget to talk about is the price. Now this is not a cheap price, a uh, cheap camera. It's uh, around 4,400 pounds in the UK plus taxes and about $5,500 in the US. But you're getting quite a lot for that. Now you could maybe compare it to cameras like the Sony you know, NX5. And if you uh, have uh, used an NX5, you'll pick this up and you'll think it's almost the, uh, the same camera. And that is about two thirds of the price. So you are paying a premium for 4K, as you would expect this in this, with this new format. So it shoots 4K, it shoots uh, uh, what's sort of becoming known as cinema 4K or 4096 by 2160. That's a 179 um, format and also shoots uh, UHD 3840 by 2160. And that's the format that most 4K monitors and TVs uh, will accept. Sony also calls, and other people also call that QFHD. Uh, the industry is tending to use the term UHD now uh, for, uh, for that. It doesn't just shoot in 4K, of course, though. It does shoot in, uh, in 1080p uh, up, to, uh, up to 60 uh, frames per second. So. Uh, that is, uh, you know, available as well. And interestingly, some of the stuff we shot at 4K and then has been sort of transcoded to uh, to 1080 uh, almost looks better than the original 1080. And there are some technical reasons for that we're not going to go uh, into, but do a search out there on that if you're uh, if you're interested. So the recording format is XAVC. This was first uh, brought to the market by Sony with their PMW F55. And uh, that, as I mentioned earlier, you know, records at, at 500 uh, megabits per second if you're shooting at uh, you know, 50 frames per second or 600 megabits per second if you're shooting at 60 or I guess I should say 59.94 for uh, those living in NTSC land. Uh, it records onto XQD cards and when we have a quick tour of the camera, we'll look at uh, those, uh, those slots. Now, talking about those XQD cards, before we give it a tour, this camera has got a 32 gigabyte card in it. Now, when you're shooting HD, you think you've got 32 gig. Well, you know, that is pretty good. But on this shooting in 4K, that only lasts about 12 minutes. So one of the things you do have to think about is how many XQD memory cards that uh, you need. You need very fast memory uh, for this. In a future upgrade, they are going to support an ABCHD with an SDHC uh, uh, card. The slot is there, 
but uh, I haven't been able to find out when that upgrade is going to be available. I don't think it's available at the moment. So let's have a closer look at the camera. So a quick tour around the uh, camera. One of our favorite features on any camera these days is the, uh, is the lens cover. This is a, uh, a switch and not the old uh, cap. A, a G series lens, this is the same lens as used on uh, other cameras, great lens. And uh, we very much uh, like this. This is a fixed lens, you can't uh, change it. Obviously, you know, three ring uh, operation. You've then got some assignable uh, buttons at the top. Three of them are pre-assigned for zebra, uh, peaking and uh, thumbnails, but you can reassign them. Three, three different uh, neutral density uh, filters we were shooting outside uh, this morning, so we've been using the neutral density fil filter. Uh, auto manual uh, focus and uh, push for auto when you're in uh, manual mode. Audio controls. And down the side here, there are buttons for uh, the, uh, operating the menus if you're using the, uh, the viewfinder. And there's a uh, sort of select and, uh, and set uh, rotary button there and you can press it to uh, select something. Uh, underneath you've got uh, you know, gain, uh, white balance and uh, a uh, speed, uh, shutter speed uh, control. Uh, so that is the, uh, is the side of the camera. On the top you have the, uh, the fold out uh, you know, LED screen and there are some uh, buttons on the top for, uh, for adjusting uh, that. So you can either use the screen with these buttons or you can use the eyepiece with these buttons for going through the menus. Uh, there is a uh, you know, zoom, rocker zoom here, as well as on the uh, ha handle grip. So going around to uh, the back then, and we'll open up this uh, cover here, and you can see that there are two uh, XQD uh, card slots. We just have a uh, XQD uh, 32 gigabyte uh, card uh, in, this is the uh, S-series, this is 180 uh, megabytes per second this will, uh, this will capture at. And uh, that is why that you, need, you, know, you obviously need that and they are you know, uh, reasonably expensive and we'll touch on that a little bit later. There's the SD card slot currently uh, not in use. Uh, two uh, USB uh, connectors and you can actually use this. Uh, this can be controlled uh, remotely. It has a sort of, you connect to it with a a phone, uh, a you know, smartphone or, a, or an iPad, etc. And through a web interface, you can actually remotely control the camera. You then have the, uh, the battery and then a series of, uh, of connectors. And it's always amazing to see that you've got the old, you know, yellow uh, phono RCA jacks for, uh, for video out, composite video and uh, right and left uh, audio. Even on 4K cameras, you, uh, you have, uh, have that. You have uh, an HDMI um, a port, and you have another SDHC card slot. This is for recording the settings of the camera, so you can back up the settings and transfer those to another uh, camera. Now, the HDMI port uh, is, uh, does support up to 60 frames per second. And Sony have said that a firmware upgrade will give it the full HDMI 2.0 uh, capability, so which is uh, which is good. So, you know, it's not a a, a 1.3 or 1.4 uh, camera, so it, which would is 1.4 is limited to 25 or 30 frames per second. This will actually, you know, give you 60 frames per up to 60 frames per second plugged into an appropriate TV such as Sony uh, Bravia 4K. Then we have uh, you know you have time code. And then, of course, you have uh, sorry, you have SDI, SDI on the left, and then we have time code on the right. Now, the SDI, you know, does does give you full, um, you know, 10-bit uh, uh, 422 uh, output, but it's only HD. It is not uh, it's not 4K. But if you're recording in 4K, you can get an HD output, so you can record, you know, a, a, an HD. Uh, a feed onto something like a, you know uh, Atomos uh, Samurai etc. Field recorder, or you can take that into uh, a studio uh, link. And then swinging the uh, obviously the uh, the eyepiece at the top. So the viewfinder is a uh, you know, 0.45 inch, uh, 8, 852 by uh, by 480, 169 uh, viewfinder. And turning the camera around, you've got the grip, the uh, you know power on off uh, buttons. And you have uh, yeah, remote uh, 
connector uh, here uh, for, uh, for LAN C, focus magnifier, zoom, you've got an Irish, uh, Irish push button, two, uh, two XLR connectors for, uh, for audio, and just under here there's a flap for, uh, for selecting the, uh, the various uh, audio, uh, audio options. And uh, we've got a microphone uh, mounted. And that's it, except at the front, of course, you have got a, uh, a microphone there as well. So you can use this uh, omnidirectional stereo electric condenser microphone if you want to, if you haven't got uh, another microphone connected. So that's a quick look around the camera. Now, if you're used to Sony cameras and you looked at that, you'll probably think, well, you know, I understand that camera. We just picked this up and uh, used it without uh, any problem at all. Uh, very similar to the NX5 and the 155, 200, etc. Really, uh, really nice camera and uh, the nice G lens on it. So let's now look at the workflow. We went out and shot some uh, video outside just of some plants to give you an idea. And we're not going to include that video here in, in, in this video. We're going to publish those separately because one of them is going to be in 4K and one of them is going to be in HD. And you can look at those because this is being shot just in HD. So it wouldn't have been fair to uh, include them in it. So do look for those two clips. But let's just have a quick look at how the workflow was and the operation in Final Cut Pro 10. We shot test clips on the PXW Z100 in both 4K and in HD. And we've created uh, two little videos which are on YouTube, which you can look at when you've finished watching this video. Here's the first one. This is the uh, HD clip. And if I move, if I'm, I'm in the Final Cut uh, Pro 10 here, and you can see there's no problem at all with uh, moving along the timeline. We were expecting some potential slowdown with the 4K version, but if I switch to 4K, we actually found that uh, it was just as responsive. Now, we did create you know, proxy media when we were importing, which of course helps a lot with this. But we found that our you know, thoughts that we might have problems with the workflow really were unfounded. All we had to do was go to the Sony website, include a driver, which helps uh, convert the uh, files from the camera. We plugged the, the camera in using a USB and just went up to the uh, normal you know, file import to mode, imported them from the uh, PXW Z100 without any problems at all. Obviously, the 4K clips are a lot larger, so you do have to allow some time for that import. And the same with, uh, with export, uh, sharing takes a little bit longer. But the actual editing really was uh, pretty quick, so we were very pleased with the overall uh, workflow. Now, as I said, the two uh, video clips are on YouTube already. Now, we have shot some other stuff in uh, 4K. Our Studio Tech UK Studio Tour is on the website, and that's actually in 4K shot with the PXW Z100. And soon we will be releasing a studio tour of the US studio, also shot with the uh, PXW Z100 in, uh, in 4K. So the two clips to look for are called Sony PXW Z100 Test Clip 4K and Sony PXW Z100 Test Clip HD. If I just go to uh, this uh, particular uh, clip, you can see that it is uh, it is playing. These are shot in uh, in 25p, and if we go to uh, settings, you'll see that available all the way from 144p up to. 2160 in uh, 4K. So what you can do is to look at the this particular clip, the 4K clip. I would suggest watching that if, in 4K if you can, but if not, watch it in HD and then go and compare that to the HD clip being played in, uh, in HD. We have found that some of the down, down converted 4K footage actually looks better than native HD footage. So see what you think. So check out uh, those two files.
So from a workflow perspective, we didn't have to buy any equipment and our infrastructure just worked as it was and we were pleased with that. So do check out those two videos. The HD video has two clips in it. Uh, the first is shot on manual, the second is shot on auto. The 4K video has three clips in it. The first two clips are almost identical to the HD. The shots are uh, taken of the uh, same plants, etc. And again, the first one is in manual and the second one is in uh, automatic. And there's an additional third clip there of a nice poppy that was in the garden that we thought we would uh, zoom in on. So check those out. Now, what do we think of the camera? We need to uh, summarize what we have uh, thought about it. So let's think about the negatives first of all. Now, if you want to shoot in low light, the camera is not that great in low light. Like many cameras at the beginning of the HD sort of uh, evolution, the low light performance wasn't great. The sensors, they have to improve as they uh, develop them. It's not saying that it's, it's bad, but it is, it, is not, uh, it is not great. They quote uh, three lux uh, as needed at, uh, at 25, a shutter speed of a, of a 25th. Now the sensor in this camera is a one chip. It's a 1 over 2.3 back illuminated Exmor R CMOS uh, sensor. So it's a, a single sensor chip and you know you, know, you are going to get some noise in low light. That is just uh, unavoidable. If you want to use this in a 4K studio environment then this probably isn't the camera to get. And it's not designed for use in a studio. You want 4K output as we've mentioned you have to use the HDMI there isn't an SDI uh, 4K output. And to be fair to Sony, the industry really hasn't decided what is going to be the interface. Is it uh, going to be 6G SDI? But then of course you're limited to 25 uh, frames per second or 30 frames per second, which is fine for our use, for that's what we produce mainly for uh, the internet. Uh, you can't support 60 frames per second over uh, 6G. It's just not fast enough. And for that, you need 12G and hardly anybody is using 12G as yet, though the components are just starting to come along. There's another interface, which is the Quad SDI, you know, four 3G uh, SDI outputs, splits the screen basically into four quadrants and puts them back together. So four, uh, three gigabit gives you the 12 gigabit or 12G that you need. So until the industry sort of decides on a standard, you know, you're on the bleeding edge of, uh, of technology. So for 4K studio use, unless you know you're going to want to use uh, HDMI 2 when uh, Sony shipped the firmware update, then this isn't uh, for you. And the last negative is really the price of the XQD memory cards. As I mentioned earlier, you do get through these memory cards pretty quickly. When we were shooting one of our videos, it was only a 10 minute video and we actually had to you know, offload uh, various uh, B-roll etc from the memory card, put the memory card back in and then uh, you know, film the next bit and it was a bit of a pain because we only have the one card. And the cards are not cheap. So you can see here on the graphic the uh, various recording times for a 64 gigabyte uh, XQD memory card and give you an idea of how many that you will need uh, for the shoots that you are going to do. Now I give it to Sony, Sony have done a good job. Fast memory you know, is not easily available. There are other technologies coming along such as CFast but they haven't yet really stepped up to the plate and delivered the, uh, the pricing and performance that is needed. So you know, with XQD you can record you know, in quality you know, without uh, risk 500 or 600 megabits per second. So well done Sony, um, but obviously with the, uh, the low production runs that they do, you know, then the pricing is that bit higher. So do bear that in mind when you're pricing up your camera, the number of cards that uh, you will need. So really that's it for the negatives. How about for the positives? Well, 4K, it's got 4K. That's great. I mean, that is its real positive. And we have been really impressed with the 4K and not just us. The videos that we have posted and the video that we have shown people, people have really been impressed. So it's, uh, it's great. And I am now 
from you know being a little bit of a oh well you know who wants 4k i'm now becoming a bit of a 4k uh, proponent and i think it is going to be great so it's got 4k that's obviously a big uh, positive the down converted 4k to hd seems to look better than the native hd there are various technical papers out there on the internet that i've been reading to try and understand it and if you want more information on that you know do a search but it is you know a, a, a benefit that i hadn't uh, expected at all i guess the third positive is that we get the normal sony quality uh, of camera the great g series lens if you're used to sony cameras this will be you know a joy for you to use they are always a pleasure to use so that's it positives and negatives now a question we get asked a lot is would we buy this camera i think the answer is if we were looking for a camera for out of studio use I would be really interested in this camera. But most of our work is in studio. So because of the problems with the lack of a 4K standard and the HDMI 4K output, then I don't think we would get this camera. But for outside use, I certainly would be interested. The uh, comments have been amazing. So that's it. That's our look at the PXW Z100. I hope you've enjoyed that. Do check out all our other videos. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Studio Tech TV. Uh, we also do a weekly live stream. That's every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. UK, 2000 CET. And you can find that at live.studiotech.tv. And one of the really nice things about that is that there is a great um, community developing in a team room who come together and help each other out, help us out, answer the questions that we can't answer, as well as give us some challenging questions from uh, week to week. So it is a great community. So do try and join us one Tuesday for that. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this. You can follow me on Twitter, at TTFNTV. We don't tweet very often, so please uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I hope you'll come back and watch another episode of Studio Tech soon. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.